Bradley is my hero because at the age of four, he was fighting against stage four leukemia. Bradley never once gave up. He lost all his hair, and yet I still didn't hear him complain about it. Bradley spent a lot of time in the hospital, more times than I can even count. When he was home, he was really, really sick, and just not Bradley. He wasn't playing a lot, he was just sleeping. And it was hard in the whole family, but he's my hero, all because he, this deadly disease came, and he fought, and he won. And that's why he's my hero. On July 28, 2010, Bradley William Treadway was diagnosed with stage 4 Burkitt's leukemia. Bradley was just 4 years old, and you would have never suspected him to be the one to get sick. Just two weeks before he was diagnosed, he was camping with his family in Hinton, West Virginia. One night, the family had been asleep for about an hour when all of a sudden Bradley started screaming. They all assumed it was just little kid nightmares, but it continued gradually and got worse. They took him to the doctor to make sure everything was okay. The doctor said it was the start of an ear infection. The Treadways got the antibiotics and didn't think anything was seriously wrong. The next morning, the family seen Bradley wake up with bruises on around his wrist, arms, and up his spine. They immediately took him back to the doctor. Bradley's doctor said he was having an allergic reaction to the antibiotics. The doctor wasn't too concerned, but he sent Bradley for blood work to confirm the reaction. Angelon was sitting in the waiting room in the hospital. Bradley, her mother, and her older brother Lloyd were back in Bradley's hospital room. Angelon had been waiting for what seemed like hours. She didn't think it could be cancer, but she kept looking down the hallway to the room. She kept seeing nurses and doctors slowly gather around Bradley's room. Some of the staff were talking while others seemed very upset. Angel Vaughn started to get worried and furious. A few minutes later, Lloyd came out of the room with tears running down his face. Angel Vaughn kept asking him what was wrong, but he wouldn't answer her. Angel Vaughn asked her mother what had happened, and her mother sat her down and told her, Bradley may have cancer. The Treadways were heartbroken, but Bradley didn't understand what was going on. The family headed home where Angel Vaughn's mother called her father home from work. She waited to tell him until he got home. Her mother packed some of Bradley's things while waiting for her husband to get home. When Angel Vaughn's father got home from work, her mother took him into the room and told him the news. That was the first time Angel ever seen her father cry. The family was getting ready to leave. Angel and her young siblings were going to their grandmother's while her parents and Bradley headed to Charleston. Before he left, Bradley came up to Angel and hugged her, saying, It's okay, Angel. I'll be okay. Angel cried hard and hugged him close. Her parents and Bradley finally got to Charleston and he was admitted into a women's and children's hospital. His blood count was extremely low. He had only about 10,000 platelets. The next day he went into early morning surgery to get his support for all of his treatments. Bradley's chemotherapy was 10 bags around. Each bag was 10 hours long. He always stayed in the hospital. Bradley spent the first month in the hospital getting chemotherapy, spinal taps, blood transfusions, bone marrow tests, and more before he finally got to go home. The Treadways were together once again. Bradley was always exhausted and had no immune system due to his chemo. He would just lay in the family recliner and just sleep for hours. Every night or around bedtime, Bradley had to get neurogenic shots in his thighs. Bradley was always pale, weak, and sick.
couldn't go to church, school, or any other place where large crowds were present. When he was able to venture out, he had to wear medical masks so he wouldn't get sick. When he would get sick or have a fever of over a hundred, he had to go back to the hospital. The family installed hand sanitizers in their home to use after they had gotten home from work or school. Bradley got into a habit. When someone would come into the house, he would yell, Sanitize your hands! If you didn't listen, he would keep yelling until you did. Bradley was given a bath one night. It was hard on Angel to see every last bit of her brother's hair in the bottom of the tub. When Bradley would go to the hospital, Angel's mother would go with him while her father would stay home, do work, and the kids having school. Angel Vaughn missed a few days before Thanksgiving break, 2010, so she could go with Bradley to one of his chemo treatments. He was in the middle of his third bag and caught a fever, so they had to stop his treatments until he was stable. Angel's mother brought the family Wii to the hospital for Angel and Bradley to play during his stays at the hospital. The Treadways were afraid that Bradley wouldn't be able to come home for Thanksgiving. The day before Thanksgiving, Bradley got to come home. Angel and Bradley and her mother picked up a turkey on their way home from Charleston and went home to start cooking. When it was time for the turkey, Bradley wanted to help stuff it. He enjoyed it very much. Bradley had a few hospital stays for his treatments and his fevers. The Treadways were so happy that Bradley was home for Christmas. Bradley went back December 26, 2010 for one of his treatments. During his chemo rounds, his family was told that it was his last chemo treatment. Bradley's last bag was finished on January 1, 2011. His doctors cried tears of joy as Bradley ran down the hospital hallway wearing his Buzz Lightyear wings and laughing. His doctor said it made them happy to see a child walk away from such a deadly disease. On that day, he was declared in remission and has been ever since. Bradley is now seven years old and is a happy, healthy, smart, and athletic little boy.